previously on Cosmic Curiosity. I'm going to be taking a picture of the remnants of a dying star. The problem is, as you can see, it, it didn't really fit, but my plan for tonight is to do a two panel mosaic. I don't have data for both panels just yet. I just finished the first panel, but I couldn't resist just making a quick stack just to see what was there. And now the conclusion. Welcome back guys. Um, today I'm going to be attempting my first ever mosaic. I've never done this before. So who knows, maybe this is going to go well, maybe not. I'm probably going to make a bunch of mistakes along the way. I've already processed um, one frame, at least this, I've done the stacks. I haven't fully processed it yet. You saw an attempt of it last time. We're going to take a step back to the raw stacked frames and gonna begin from there. The reason I haven't stacked the oxygen for the second panel, let me just show you here because this is gonna be a bit of a tricky one, I think, there. So these are the raw unstacked frames. And if we open up the frame list here, um, the problem is there, w there must have been, or there was clearly some very thin high clouds. So while we do get some light in here, we can also see as I go through the night here, the, it gets darker and darker and dimmer and dimmer as these clouds are moving in. And this is where I'm a bit in doubt, like, should I just discard this? I mean, there is clearly still nebulosity and the, it looks like the stars are still sharp enough. I did stop early and then go out another night and you can see this was a very clear night and we see so much more detail in the frames. Problem is, I had to wait for clear weather, meaning I didn't have as much observation time so as I got on through the night, this got low on the horizon. You could just begin to see some trees here encroaching into the image. Those are trees and now it's pretty much just hidden behind trees. So I think at least that one, that one, and that one I'm going to discard. I think I'm going to keep this even though there is a bit of a tree down here, but I think it's going to be fine. Out of the 40 frames we selected, they all managed to register. Because of all those clouds that are moving in, we do get a rather extreme gradient. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to do a, um, a background neutralization of this before I move on to the next phase to try and get rid of that gradient. Okay, I think that's going to be good. I'm trying to avoid as much of the nebulosity as I could, get something all around it. And let's try to compute background and see what we get. Okay, it's um, it's not amazing. It looks like we have kind of a dust halo here that wasn't caught in the flat. So maybe I need to reshoot some flats in the, uh, in the oxygen, looks like. So because this was shot over multiple nights, um, we kind of have a small issue. Now, this issue here is if you go, let's see here, uh, RGB compositing, that's what I'm looking for. Here you can see I've already set it up with the HOO palette that I want to run. Now, if we look at the RGB here, we can see that clearly I didn't do an amazing job with the field rotation. You can see here it's too high, here it's too low, and you can see that blob there and that blob there is supposed to be aligned. So there's clearly some noticeable rotation in this picture. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stacked images hydrogen and oxygen pull them in we're gonna keep keep a note here that the hydrogen here is the is the first one and oxygen is the second one we now have these two images in a sequence and then we're gonna go and do a registration of them you can now see if we go into the sequence we can see how severe that frame rotation is but we can also now see that it has been aligned with each other there we go okay I think this is going to be our first frame. I don't want to stretch it yet because the problem I'm, I think I'm facing is I'm going to have to do a mosaic. I'm going to have to take these two panel and I'm going to have to place them on top of each other, right? In order to do that, I want them to be as similar as possible. That's why I'm waiting with doing any stretching on these until the very last moment. And my plan is, I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but my plan is to stretch them just enough that they can, that they're visible in a, in a linear state, but not fully stretched then do the um, uh, do both of them so they look as similar as I can, 
once I've done that, then I can move over and do the mosaic part of it, stack them on top or stitch them together, and then we can go back, hopefully, and continue to stretch and manipulate the image. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it, or if you just, just go all the way, stretching it and make them look as similar as you can. And look at this, I got the rotation a lot closer on the second one, as I've been improving my, uh, my, my skill here. They're, they're shoot over multiple nights, but you can see here the rotation is a lot less severe. This is the first time I'm seeing this, by the way. I haven't seen this data yet. I'm processing this for the first time, and I'm quite excited about it. Okay, I think I found a process that I kind of like. Um, I've done it on one panel, and we're gonna try to do the same thing here. Um, the first thing we're gonna, I'm gonna do is, oof, this is way off. Uh, you can see here the colors are way off if I, unless I link the channels. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do a, do a color calibration uh, before we do any kind of stretching. So now we can go and do the normal histogram transformation. Take all the channels, auto stretch, put this back in linear so we can see it. And then we're just gonna apply the auto stretch. And this is just to try and basically test this, uh, just to see if we can get something that's actually kind of working here. So we're gonna just apply an auto stretch. And in the other one, I also did a green noise. Where is it? Remove green noise um, on it. There we go. Okay, we're gonna swap over to a tool called Image Composite Editor. It's an old discontinued Microsoft tool, but people say it kind of works. So we're gonna attempt this and uh, see what we can find. We have our two pictures here. They look very white for some reason. Now, what do we do? How does this work? Okay, hold on. Now we get somewhere. We can manually set this up. I just went into Google and I found a picture of the Great Avail Nebula. We can see here that the the pointy end is at the pointy end, and the wide end is at the wide end. So pointy end, so this is wrong. There we go, that's better. Narrow end, narrow end, wide end, wide end. It's still so washed out, the colors, I'm not really sure. Maybe another problem is that they are not in the same field of view, because I had to crop the top image a lot more aggressively than I had to do with the bottom image. They don't really line up like that. Um, we could just add a large search radius. It still won't do it. Okay, I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that the colors are washed out, if it has something to do with the field of view being different. Um, I am gonna have to go and investigate this. After struggling with Microsoft Ice for quite a while, I eventually bit the bullet and decided to try and do this in PixInsight. Now, the reason why I didn't do this to begin with and I've been using Cyril is because I'm just not proficient enough with PixInsight yet. It's something I'm practicing with right now, but I'm still more comfortable with several. But I did manage to find some helpful tutorials online. I followed them, and after about half an hour of work, I did actually manage to successfully make a mosaic out of my two frames in PixInsight. There is some steps in my mosaic process here. That's not good enough, because if we just take a quick look at the final image here, I think it's very clear to see that these are two stitched images. The background are not even, the stars have different size, like they're notably smaller in the uh, in the upper side of the image compared to the lower. This is clearly a stitched mosaic. It did a de decent job, but I think my process needs to be reworked a bit in order to get better results. Maybe we're gonna have to stitch them separately, so take the stars out and then stitch the, 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 the nebulosity and then put the stars back in. I, I don't know. But what I think I will do is I'll try to redo this entire process in PixInsight as I get a little bit more proficient with it. And maybe this should be one of those things that I, I want to begin live streaming and I think that should be a, a fun um, activity to try and uh, reprocess this with you guys so you guys can help me along and help me learn to use PixInsight and be a little bit more proficient. But I just want to give you guys a closer look at the final image. Even though I'm not 100% satisfied with the result, you're still going to get your montage.
The nebula is called the Veil Nebula, and it is what's called a supernova remnant. That means this thing exploded about 10 to 25. Somewhere along the shore here, we can already see now, this is perfect with this bird eye view, that we have some kind of like steps or platform here. 